Mark, a daily blog about anything is challenging. Do you write every day? Do you write in advance? What's your modus operandi? Uh, I write every day. I, you know, jazz wax for me became like calisthenics or warm up. The interesting thing about jazz wax is that I don't have writer's block. In other words, I, I work on my pieces hard. Uh, in other words, I'll write and there are certain essays that I'll, you know, the essay that I write for the opinion page on, you know, the current uh, column that I write, uh, which is euphemistically called analysis of an album. Um, not officially that, but it's an al each month I write a piece on a major album that changed music history, usually rock or soul. Um, but, you know, for that, uh, you know, usually it, I, I'll write, I'll put it away, I'll pick it up, I'll put it away, I'll pick it up. Um, but I, there's no writer's block. It's just polishing. And on my weekly column, House Call for the Mansion section, that, that that's never, you know, so I have I don't have writer's block. Um, but a lot of that is the result of me writing every single day of post for jazz wax. So you, you're sort of keeping certain muscles active. I would say it's sort of like sprinting before you run a marathon or stretching uh, or, you know, doing any number of things to, to get in the groove before you start to, um, to do something. Jazz wax serves that function for me. As far as ideas go, no, I, you know, I have endless amounts of ideas. I remember somebody once saying, you know, you'll, like two years in, you're, you're probably going to be finished. You know, you, I don't know how you're going to come up with, I, I said, I'm going to be writing this thing until I, you know, my head hits my keyboard. I said, I never have a problem with ideas I'm, because I'm trained in the mass market. I know what the mass market loves. I know whatever's of interest to me, whatever my gut likes, thousands of readers are going to like it. Um, and that's really it. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I don't, People can accuse me of a lot of things, but I don't think, you know, on Jazz Wax, it's ever that I'm boring or dull or a post is uninteresting or I'm, I'm long winded and it runs too long. I get to the point, I just want to serve up the juice and I just want the people to be turned on by it. I can't tell you how many emails I've gotten after, since the pandemic where people have said I got Jazz Wax got them through the pandemic, that with all the depression, with all the thinking that things were never going to be back to normal, that work was never going to be back to normal, that we it was going to be 10 years before people could go out of the house again, that, and it would never be the same. That for some reason, Jazz Wax, with its optimism and the fun quotient, um, pe you know, people, you know, I mean, there are, I don't even know the people. I mean, it's not like friends are writing this to try to suck up to me so I cover something. I mean, they're all strangers, you know, hundreds and hundreds of strangers telling me this. Um, and if 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 I'm doing that, uh, you know, people say, people say, do you ever get tired? I mean, do you ever want out? And I said, yeah, all the time. I said, I, you know, I would have stopped this thing years ago. I said, but I can't. And they say, well, why not? You know, it's not like I'm I'm into the mob for something that, you know, you, hey, you better keep writing that post. You know, it's that people are depending on it. You know, it's it's almost like this this um, elixir or, or elixir or this this thing that people you know if i stop there's going to be a lot of people who just are really going to be disappointed and for that and i think that's why musicians play and you know if they don't if some musicians don't get paid as much as they like they see they play for free you know you hear that expression and i don't get paid for this so for me it's just the joy of having an audience the joy of knowing that this that people who have the same like-minded view of music and of kindness. Um, I mean, anybody who's written me an abrupt or rude note never does that again. I mean, basically I'll write back and say, you know, if they say, you know, why don't you write about this? I mean, if they, if, if it's an, if it's an impolite note or email, you know, I'll write back and I'll say, look, let's, let's, first of all, we, we don't talk like that here. You know, if you are addressing me, why don't you start by saying how much you like Jazz Wax? Why don't you tell me how happy you are you're getting it for free? And then tell me what's on your mind and be have a nice, kind ending. And, you know, you'd think that would chase people away, but people then come to their senses and then they become very close friends. You know, they realize that they've, they, they were treating me like I was giving out free beer or something or free sandwiches. And, you know, instead of barking for what they want, they're 
much more polite. It's, this, is a, this is a polite blog, a polite, kind space where it's just about making the reader happy. And if you've got something to say, say it politely. Well, in addition to that kind of feedback, do you hear from musicians? Do you hear from friends oh of musicians who accept the list of the list of my heroes who read this thing? I mean, that to me, you know, when Creed Ter when, back in the day, I mean, you remember because you you were you were here, you were with me at the very beginning. Um, I mean, when people like Bud Shank were reading it, and Hal McCusick, and Teddy Charles, and Eddie Burt, and I, on, Sal Schlinger and, and Chris Conn. I mean, for some reason, it was right at that moment where a lot of these people just discovered how to use the internet because their kids were still at home and showed them how to do it. Um, or they knew somebody who showed them how to do it and suddenly they could read this thing every day. I, you know, I would hear from these people all the time. And now today, you know, new heroes or other heroes. I mean, you know, Bill Charlap or Harvey S. And, uh, you know, Chuck Israels and, you know, the list goes on and on and on. I mean, um, honestly, I'd have to write it all down. I mean, all these people who I admire, uh, Mike Stern, I mean, they're just, they read it, you know, and they, they like it. And it's part of their coffee in the morning or part of their muffin eating. And it takes five minutes, but they somehow leave with a sense that what they do is important, that what they're doing is touching people and if i can like a female like i you know love female vocalists who you know I, I just think women don't get enough serious coverage in jazz in general um and i just you know i love my crew of of female musicians and female singers because they're so supportive and they're so kind and i love you know i Again, this isn't based on me needing female readers. I only write about what I love. If if male or female, if I get something, and no matter who the artist is, I don't have advertisers, so I don't care. And if I don't like something, I don't write about it. I just, you know, and that can be from a friend artist. It's like, I just say, you know, it didn't really work for me, the album. And I don't write about what I don't like. And I said, art is hard enough. I don't like using my space to like make fun of people or show off, you know, show off by being, you know, sarcastic in my language and trashing something. I don't trash things. I, I just focus on things that I love. And my formula has always been, if I love it, my readers will love it and they'll trust me. And if I don't like it, I won't write about it. And if I, if I'm not writing, you know, the worst thing in the world I could hear is that some reader bought what I thought was great and they thought it sucked. And that's never happened. But that to me would be a real embarrassment because I don't support things unless I have, unless I don't support things unless I have to because my heart is loving it so much that I have to let people know about it. If something doesn't work for me, I won't let readers know because I am writing to an audience that spends money and they spend a lot of money. And they're, they're easy to spend, they're easy to get them to spend money. I will never violate or take advantage of that. You know, I'll never get them to buy something I hated just simply because I was given it for free or because someone begged me to do it or I owed, I owed a favor. I just, I, I will never compromise my formula, never compromise my standard that I only write about what I love, period. I mean, it saves me a lot of time, you know, but the other good thing, Brett, is I only have two gears, right? I either love something or I can't stand it. And that saves me a lot of time. Absolutely.